Welcome, everybody. We are going to talk a little bit more about simple feature and the mess related to database integrity. Then we are going to switch to show a client which is based on Postgres topology. And then Sandro Santelli is going to tell me more about, tell us more about Postgres topology. Mattia is going to tell us more about the client. So let's start up with a mess. Why is it not? Yeah? It's too difficult. Oh, left side. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, we have this. We have a very simple case. This is a polygon. What we want to do is to draw a road here and end up with this result. This is super simple. So we have this context. We have a database with simple feature. We have an API where you can load simple feature. So what's the problem? One of the problems are client decisions. The client has to decide what should I do with the existing surface? Should I update it or should I delete it in the original database? Depending on what decisions, what decisions made there, no, sorry. The client has to decide what to do with those three in a kind of new surfaces. Should I do an insert on the road, which is in the middle? Maybe natural. But to the left of the road and to the right of the road, you also have two surfaces. Then one of those will be insert and one will be update. Or you could maybe delete the original surface and do three inserts. But then, what about attribute values, like dates? It may be natural that date has a new value, but not maybe the two on the left on the right side. Another question is, where is the clock? Stop me when um, forever. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's continue. Uh, what about this attribute values and borders? If you look at this case, there, what's actually new here is two lines for the road, actually nothing else. But if you look at simple feature, you cannot have attribute values on borders. Well, you can, but you have to have the same value for all the borders for that surface. In this case, the road actually contains a new two, two new borders and two old borders. Uh, let's continue. So attribute values and borders is not possible with simple feature. OK, look at this case. We talked about borders. Let's say we have a client, one with a tolerance of one meter and one with a tolerance of t 10 meter. In the database, we uh, try with one meter. You everybody know what happens here, don't you? Yes. You can show it anyway. This happens. You will get overlap and gap everywhere. So let's sum up, sum up a little bit. The pay payload is big. Why? Because it's a mess of new data, data to read, data to be updated, data to be deleted, to be, sorry, to be deleted. So this is a, yeah, it's a big mess. So what's this in the Postgres topology world? What we're going to do here, we're going to draw two new lines, as you know. So it's only new data, so you can throw away this part. We only need the create part. It's simpler for the client. And you see that the lines does not fit exactly, but that's handled by the server. So if they use some wrong toleran tolerances, that's not a big problem. So the two new lines are sent to the server. And they get this result back. So what's the server responsibility here? The service responsibility to cut up outlines that's not used anymore. As you see, it fits perfectly well now. It's also the service responsibility to keep track of dates. For instance, on the top left there, there's a date attached to that 
around the edge. And that is still 2015, which is natural. If you look at the date on the new road, that's from this year, and that makes sense. If you're going to push all this business logic onto the client, and you have many different vendors, it will be wrong, because not every developer, as myself, do you read all the specifications when we do develop. So, sorry, forgot. Fix this next time. Okay, if you look at the surfaces, this surface has not really changed because it's only the road that is new. So, the date here is from 1999. That's correct. On this case, on the road, that's new. So, that makes sense. So, what we do, we return to the client. So, this is what we return to the client. The client has to decide what to do. The client selects the road and changes the attribute on that road, one single attribute, and sends the road back. This way, we secure database inconsistency. So, and we actually then follow pretty much what Cod said in 1970. This is what it looks like in the database. In the bottom line, you have a topology for the and here you have also a topology for the border. Not important. Here you have what's this looking like in QGIS, since from a Boskis topology world. Uh, Sandra will say something about that later. Okay, let's skip back to the Korean land cover, 1980. As I said, it was perfect when they sent it down to the Europe, when they get it back. It's full of overlap for the Norway part. I think we have about 800 overlaps in this data set. So people tend to say that it's no problem to identify lines that match using simple feature. This pretty much proves that it's not simple because this is a set of simple features and they are not, do not manage to fit this exactly. I tested many data sets and you find pretty much overlap any place. What time is it? Okay. Okay, so what we do is that we move this data into Posky's topology. And here we need to do some work, more work on Posky's topology, but we use content based grids. I will not explain that now, but we basically start on a smaller cell, extend the cell size, and take bigger and bigger chunks. We need to run things in parallel when we run with big, on big data sets, so we need to chunk things up. Chunk thing up. In Bosky's topology, when we reach this level, things go very slow to merge everything together. Hopefully we can do more work on this later. Okay. A couple of things here. Some say that you can use tolerance levels. I basically thought that myself to clean up simple feature uh, polygons. But Paul Rehansi told me, said that, please do it with, with no tolerance. And basically, the problem with tolerance is that it's totally random what happens. If you look at the line done at the left or the, of the dark spot, if that one comes first into the database and you run with a high tolerance, that line's win. If the line on the top comes first in the database, that wins. So you get a random result every time. I think that's why um, uh, Paul Dave, Paul um, Ramsey told me to not use tolerances. Another thing that Sandro told me, we do not have any good methods for doing line merging. So basically, this, this is from Colleen Land Cover. It's two millimeter. And you get a valid face, and then when you have a valid face, you decide what to do based on attribute values and sizes. And then you get a consistent result every time. Okay, I wonder, this is the last thing, just about simplify. I wonder why they didn't simplify the Korean land cover. Because you see the green dots and the red dots here. The red dots are actually not needed. It doesn't give you any more information, it's just extra, extra data. So, I run as the simplify, and this is the set of overlaps I get. You get overlaps everywhere. 
That's because I do simplify on each simple feature. This is what it looks like. And here, in more details, that's about two millimeters. If you do this on, topolo on topology, it looks like this. No overlaps, and everything is basically perfect in the context of overlap. Okay, Mattia. Our first approach uh, started about uh, eight years ago, and uh, it involved uh, uh, Java in backend and uh, uh, JavaScript for the client with the D3 uh, library for visualization and uh, parsing of, of TopoJSON. And then we had uh, a manual database setup, that means uh, with the configuration files edited uh, manually. But, but there uh, we had alre already the topology advantages, and uh, we only sent to the backend uh, what is needed, only new changes to the, to the backend. This is the first uh, project that went to uh, production. It's a, a reindeer uh, grazing land uh, uh, solution uh, where uh, the users can, uh, can define where the, the reindeer uh, goes. And we also have, uh, we have uh, uh, in this case, 20 layers, many of them uh, in uh, polygonal, polygonal shapes, and uh, some with the line string and uh, uh, one with points. Uh, and here I show the example with the line strings, where uh, you see different uh, cartography for uh, for uh, the cases when there is uh, uh, fences or uh, uh, infrastructure. The second example I will show is called uh, R5 Web, where AR stands for Arial Resources. Here we only have one layer that covers the whole Norway, and we have uh, uh, polygonal faces. And the users uh, are uh, from uh, municipalities, and they can, they can define uh, uh, new shapes or change uh, existing ones. And I will say something about uh, the statistics of, of this uh, uh, solution. This uh, one was, uh, um, uh, it was sent to production about one year ago. And uh, uh, as for one week ago, we had uh, 200 users. Uh, from the municipalities, and the whole Norway has uh, 356 municipalities, and uh, 172 uh, had gained uh, access to the uh, application, and uh, 103 are uh, daily active, and uh, uh, data set data set um, cover the whole Norway. Norway is uh, more than 2,000 kilometers in in length. And we have uh, 9 million faces. And until now, 5,500 has been modified. And is that uh, what you see in red in the, in the image? And then it comes the solution uh, we, had, uh, uh, we have today. Uh, a few months ago, Lars decided to explore more uh, the pot potentiality of uh, Postgres. And we decided to use that uh, for a backend. Uh, and uh, we, we, we use uh, uh, plain JavaScript for the client with uh, only uh, two libraries, one for bundling the code and one for uh, the map and interaction fun functionalities. Now we have, the important thing is now we have uh, a generic client with a, a declarative database setup. And the client, it's very small, it's uh, 3.1 megabytes. And the common uh, point with the, the old approach is that we uh, use a topology and only essential information ex ex exchange between uh, the client and the server. And the user interface is as simple as uh, this one. Uh, you see we have uh, a base map that in this case is op uh, OpenStreetMap. And uh, we can uh, draw uh, lines defining new uh, geometry, for example, uh, the big uh, rectangle in blue. And then we can also 
uh, modify existing geometries. Here with one line we split uh, an existing rectangle in two and we assign some attributes to, to it. And I will leave you the word to Sander for more details. Hello. Okay, uh, this is uh, the first time I see these slides, so I don't know exactly what I'm looking at, but I think this is the declarative way we are creating the database. It's a JSON format in which I'm just, just to avoid the SQL to create the, the schema, we are defining it in a JSON format. Uh, it's, it, we are specifying just which tables do exist, and then we assign to, you see the arrow? Yeah, we assign to roles, the surface layer and the border layer. This, is, uh, th uh, this code is supported by an open source project from Nibio, which is uh, hosted on uh, GitLab under the Nibio open source uh, namespace. Um, it's a set of uh, PL, PGSQL, and SQL functions. So one of these functions accepts this format to create a schema and expose functions to interact with this schema. Uh, the, mo the model uh, allowed by this, uh, this application, which is called Topo Update SQL, is a subset of the possible models that you can implement with the, with the PostGIS topology. In this model, you have surfaces, which are aerial features, and borders, which are linear features. And you cannot have, um, you are dividing the space into just a uniform set of these surfaces with no gap allowed and no overlaps allowed. So uh, do, these two roles are mandatory. You have surfaces and you have borders. So you can specify which table plays which role. And you can, uh, uh, can, and you can add arbitrary attributes to each of these two tables. And then you can define which operations are allowed on this, uh, in this schema. In this case, we are just defining an add borders split surfaces operation, which is the one you saw in action before, presented by Mattia. Um, okay, you are jumping to another thing for a second, and we are uh, now seeing what, uh, what you can do when you have a topology-based ba uh, uh, schema in the database. The advantage of having a topology organization in the database is that the um, uh, gaps and overlaps are never possible because the, all the, if you, as long as you use the functions which are specifically written to edit a topology, a positive topology, every time you insert a line, it is the, the, the core positive extension automatically detects which are the, the, the intersection and if you're splitting a face, you automatically get the, the two faces. So uh, in theory, you have no possibility to break the, the planar coverage of the whole space. Unless uh, you, you do direct editing, because for speed reasons, we are not using, PostGIS topology is not using triggers to enforce this, uh, um, this integrity, because it would be very, very slow. Um, but, so, so you, you can break it if you are very, uh, if you're not careful about using the, the functions which are exposed for the user. Uh, but you can, you can still validate the topology. There is a function that uh, is similar to uh, stvalidate of the PostGIS core, which is meant to tell you if a geometry is valid. Even in PostGIS, you can still break a geometry if you want. So this one is for topology. You can check that your topology is still valid. Um, in the, new, in the newest version of PostGIS, I think it's 3.3, we, we introduced a, a new parameter for valid, the validate topology function, which is a bounding box. Because validating a topology is really, really uh, computationally intensive operation. So when you have things like nine million phases, as it happens for Nibio, it can take days. 
So they funded uh, a new parameter, which is a bounding box, so you can limit the, the check into an area you're editing, maybe. Um, OK, these are the kind of errors you can get uh, if you break the topology. Uh, like, uh, yeah, you can have coincident no nodes, which are not expected. You shouldn't get them if you use the specific function or, I don't know, maybe inconsistent view of which phase is on the left or on the side. Sorry? I'll continue on my slide. OK. Yeah, so this is, uh, where are my slides? Can I go back? Is there still these, uh, these slides? Well, the last slide could have been interesting for them. I don't know how to stop this. <laughs> the, the one before? Can we switch to the one before? OK, this one could be interesting. Just it has some links. <laughs> and I'm not Santinelli. I'm Santilli, anyway. OK, these are my slides. There's uh, old slides, sorry. It's there from 2017. I was not supposed to take this presentation, but anyway. And my name is Santilli. But, uh, this is basically about the post topology itself. It started in 2006, and then it was uh, uh, entered post uh, in the first time in version 1.1.0. So it's an old, pretty old, uh, pretty old uh, code support. There is a, an ISO specification which, which uh, uh, specifies what are the, the tables defining a topology in a standard way. So what, if you use post topology, you are, you are using an uh, ISO standard model for the faces, nodes, and edges. Uh, in 2010, it was integrated thanks to uh, Regione Toscana, which is also hosting this conference. It's a sponsor of this conference, I think. And they, they funded the reach, reaching the, uh, all, the, all the functionality specified by ISO. I'm out of time, so I will. Uh, I don't know what to tell them or not in five minutes. Um, maybe you can go straight to questions, because otherwise, this you already saw this, the effects of simplifying things in isolation. Uh, these are the reasons why you, would, you could want to use uh, uh, topology. One of these is that the relationships, uh, relationships are explicit. Like in this case I'm showing, you can tell if two uh, areal, to, to areal features touch because they will share an edge. And this is something you can, you can determine at the database level with normal data types, not with spatial operations, which are known to be slow. This is the conceptual model. If, if anyone is into conceptual models, I won't I explain, I guess. Uh, this is the example topology we are using in uh, test cases. You can have hierarchical layers. They are not using it in Nibio, but uh, you can have topogeometry objects, which are features defined by their underlying topogeometry objects. So if you have, for example, municipalities, you could, you could have provinces defined by municipalities and regions defined by provinces. Can I say one word? This model that Sandra is showing is not a random model, as he said. That's an ISO standard. So that's quite important. It's like everything is structured according to ISO, and you have validation routines, so it's a very rock solid system. And I would also say thank to Sandro for a very nice work. It would have been impossible without the help from Sandro and other open source developers. Yes, continue, Sandro. Yeah, as which I moved on because I, I, I show, the, the slides were showing the underlying physical models of, uh, of uh, edges, nodes, and uh, faces. On top of this abstraction, which is defined by ESO, there is another abstraction, which is the concept of topogeometries, which are features, ge geometrical features, which are defined by the underlying primitives, is what we call them, which, which is nodes, or edges, or faces. So you can have an aerial what they call, for example, a surface. A surface is an object which is defined by 
faces, the underlying faces. So you can have a, a surface, we can have an aerial geometry defined by multiple faces. An overlap, an overlap would be the existence of two aerial geometries which are sharing one face, for example, one or more faces. That, that's what you would call an overlap. And the gap is when a phase exists, but doesn't, there is no aerial topogeometry using that phase in its definition. And this is the object uh, that you can store in a column in PostGIS and uh, you can associate attributes with. And there is an automatic cast to the simple feature, the simple geometry, so you can uh, run whatever geometrical operation on these topogeometries because they will be automatically casted to a geometry. Uh, these are some functions to create the, uh, to populate a topology. Some function, help functions to inspect the topology. And you have topojson output for a topogeometry, for example. So you, uh, by using the underlying topology, you can avoid uh, sending to a client duplicated borders when you are sending a, f a wall, a wall coverage. You, you will send each border exactly once. Okay, example we can skip, I guess. It's over? Yeah, we don't have any more time, I think. One minute left. One minute left, so if we can jump to questions, if we have questions directly. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you for the very interesting